What's up? My name is Royce and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things film and tech. And today I'm going to show you a really simple raw workflow that you can use when filming on your Nikon ZR, but you're editing in Final Cut Pro. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to import all three of the raw codecs that are in the Nikon ZR. So that's R3D and E, which is Red's raw format, and then uh, NRAW, NEV, and then ProRes raw. First, I'll start off with Red's R3D and E. And before we can actually import our red files, we need to download the red Apple workflow installer. And I'll leave a link to this down in my description. And this plugin is what's going to allow Final Cut Pro to read our red raw files. And the latest one was released on October 15th. And you see in the release notes, it added support for our 3D and E. So we'll go ahead and hit download. And once that's downloaded, we can now start importing our red footage. I have my R3D file here that was shot on my Nikon ZR. And now I can drag and drop this right here into Final Cut Pro. Drop it onto the timeline. We're good to go to start editing it. Now, if you're not familiar with this and the ZR is kind of your first step into shooting raw and you're kind of wondering, okay, how do I get rid of this flat look? There's a couple ways to do it. First, I'll show you right here. If you click on the actual clip, go up here to the eye icon for info. We can scroll down here to camera LUT and then we can select a LUT right here that I have downloaded called Red Film Bias. Now this is a LUT provided by Red themselves and you can download it also by going to another website <laughs> from Red. I will also include this in the description, Red Creative LUT Kit. And it'll have you log in or create an account if you haven't yet, hit download. And then once it's done, you'll have access to a bunch of different LUTs straight from Red themselves. The Red IPP2 Creative LUTs are LUTs that for clips that have already been converted over to Rec. 709, so they already have the color, uh, they've been color balanced, all that stuff. You can just apply this look on there to get something pretty cool. Now this one right here, this is the one I use, the Red IPP2 Color Transform. And these are the LUTs that are actually gonna transform uh, that flat profile into um, something that's workable that we can start correcting and grading. And like I said here, I selected the red film bias R3D from here. Now, if you don't see camera LUT here in the inspector window, just come on down here to where it says basic, click on that, and you can actually choose your metadata views. So you can choose to have way more information or different types of information that you want. Now for me, I just like using base basic. I don't like seeing too many things up there. I get confused. So I keep it on basic, but what I want is I definitely want that camera LUT uh, section in there, which I believe is in there. If you select general, it's in there by default, but you get some other stuff in there as well. So let's go back to basic, scroll down to edit metadata view. This is where you can select what is seen in the inspector. So click on the search bar, just type in camera LUT. And here we can see camera LUT and just select that to make it viewable, hit okay. So you can save that metadata view so it's always there or import it into another Final Cut application on a different computer if you wanna do that. So now we have something workable, something kind of creative. So then I can come up here to the color correction section and I will just use these basic tools that Final Cut has because they're actually not that bad, to be honest. And I will also open up, if you go down to view here, in the viewer section and select video scopes. You can also open that by hitting command seven on the keyboard. And then if I close the browser tab up here and get a little bit more real estate I can work with, and then I can just start grading this, honestly. I can boost contrast right here. Maybe bring down shadows a little bit, bring back in some color. So now we got something viewable. I am not a colorist by any means. I just get by with what I can get by with with my own projects. So there we go. Now we just got a simple quick grade just from throwing on a LUT there. Now another way to do it where we actually have more control over our clip. Let's bring the browser back in and go back to info, remove that camera LUT. I'll still keep my scopes here, but close the browser again. Now going back to the inspector, scrolling all the way down, we see here modify red raw settings. This will give us full control over our raw clip here. Now we have access to the actual metadata that we got when we filmed this clip. So for color space, if I wanted, I can go over here to Rec. 709, Gamma BT 1886. And so that will give us a colored image that we can also work off of. 
And then ISO, I can adjust that as well. I could drop this down to 100, 125 maybe, a little bit. Color temperature was at 5600. If I want to make this a little cooler, I don't know, maybe drop this like to 5000, something around there. I can change the tint. And now I believe because this is R3D NE coming out of the ZR, not a red file coming out of like a Komodo X or something like that, we don't have control over everything. I could do contrast here. So I can boost the contrast. I cannot affect the saturation, it looks like, or the brightness or the exposure for whatever reason. So all the tools aren't working. So I need to figure out if that is a Nikon ZR issue. If it's a plugin issue, maybe they need to update it to fix it so we can access that. But right now um, I can do contrast and I can do color temperature. And of course, affecting the color space and everything. So I can hit apply. That is now baked into our clip where we can edit leave that. So I essentially just <laughs> did some color correcting right there, all within the camera raw settings right from there. But if you want to do it the professional way with all this raw settings, keep all that the way it is. So the color space, the original red wide gamut, gamma log 3G10. Uh, we still just ISO and in the exposure, color temp and things like that. That's fine. But you want to keep that color space what it is and then control everything else outside so you have the most control possible. What you really want to do, drop an adjustment clip on here on top of that, on top of the clip that you want. You can drop in a custom LUT onto there. And then with that custom LUT here, then go down here and select the LUT that you want. So I can select that film bias LUT again, or I can do medium contrast, no contrast. So then that way I have more control over that. Then come back over here to my color settings. Boost that contrast there, bring down the brightness a little bit, bring down that exposure. And there we have a workable image that we can edit off of and then add any other type of look or color grade that we want. That's it for red. It's pretty simple. You just got to download that red Apple workflow installer plugin, drop that in and you're good to go. Next, we'll do ProRes RAW, which is even easier because ProRes, ProRes RAW created by Apple. Final Cut Pro also created by Apple. It's meant to work together smooth like butter. So you throw that on there, then get rid of the scopes for a second. It automatically will throw a look on there via the raw settings. This is going to look a little bit different than reds, different controls. So under raw to log, that's where we can put what the actual log image that we shot, which was Nikon's N log, which is what the ZR shoots in when we're shooting ProRes. So when we do that, it gives us our flat image that we can control however we want, but we still have control here over the ISO. We can bring that up or bring it down. And I like here, it shows what the captured ISO is. You always can keep track of where you started. And we have the color temp that we can change here. Again, keeping a log of where it started. We just select this as shot white balance. So that way we can't even affect it. And exposure bias. And this is just if we wanna make some minor adjustments to the exposure as well. Those are the ProRes RAW settings. Pretty simple. Same philosophy here. You can either under the camera LUT select Nikon N log, because that's what we shot in to give us our base look. And then we can adjust from there, drop it onto the timeline, and we're good to go. Or leave that blank, add in that adjustment clip, which you can add without going up to the edit window by hitting option A. We'll give you an adjustment clip. That is a shortcut and then dragging that custom LUT onto there. So ProRes RAW, short and sweet, super easy to work with. Now, next up, Nikon's NRAW. Yes, you can import NRAW into Final Cut Pro. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro though does not support this natively. So you will need to purchase a plugin that will allow you to do this. And the plugin is Color Finale's Transcoder 2, raw media application for Mac OS. And it's not just NRAW, it also handles a lot of different codecs that Final Cut may have issues with. You do have to buy it though. And if we go over here, they're having a special offer. It's $139. Definitely not the cheapest option out there. So if you're someone who uses Final Cut and you're shooting in NRAW, it will come at a price. Where for me personally, you have the budget, go ahead and do it because I'm about to show you. It's actually a pretty simple workflow. And if you do do it, I think you will be happy with it and appreciate it. But if you do not have the budget, you may be off better working in DaVinci Resolve or if you use Adobe Premiere Pro. 
But if you are interested, I will leave a link to Transcorder 2 in the description. This is not sponsored or anything. I purchased this with my own money. I've used it from time to time when I shot on the Z6 III for a little bit. I just think it's a good workaround for those um, who have the budget to buy it. So let's say you do, or you're least interested to see if it's worthwhile, I will show you. So instead of just dropping our NRAW file into our uh, media browser here, we're actually gonna go back up to the plugin tab right here at the top and scroll down to transcoder panel. And then from here, this is where we will navigate to our NRAW file. I have two files. I was trying NRAW high and NRAW normal quality. And right here we can see all of our information and our settings, our color space, gamma. What we wanna do is go over here on the right side where we have all our information. Under resolution, we're gonna to wanna to do full. I shot in 6K, color space, rec 2020. The gamma switch to Nikon N log. We see here we now have our flat profile and we can leave this here because we can adjust this later once we import. Now the next thing that's an important step is at the very bottom, kind of in the middle here, you want to select use original media. We'll select that and import selected. We'll select the library we want to put it in. And the only other annoying thing is it will import it into, uh, sorry, it was audio was really off on this clip. It will import this into a new event. If anyone knows how to fix that, maybe I'm doing something wrong, please let me know because that is annoying because then I got to drag this over into the event that I actually want it to be in. But for now, it's fine. We'll just leave it here and we'll put it in this timeline. And we see here, we now have our NRAW clip in Final Cut Pro. Now let's go back real quick and I'll just show you uh, if we didn't change those settings. Let's see, I'll put this back to half, back to Rec. 709, Rec. 709, and now put import selected. What it's now doing is it's importing a copy of the clip with the settings that we have made over here. So we're not getting the original media. We're getting a copy of that media that is being copied and stored into our Final Cut Pro library, my Nikon ZR library right here. That's why it's important to select use original media when you do this or else you won't be working off of the <laughs> original media. And if your clip for whatever reason isn't looking as good as you think it should look, that's gonna be why. And now that clip has been copied over, we can now check to see that we now have that basic look baked in to our clip. We cannot turn it off, it is there. And if we go to info here, we can see it is now half of the resolution of our original clip, which is that 6K and raw clip. So yeah, that's something you really wanna pay close attention to if you choose uh, to go this route with Transcoder 2. Make sure you use that original media, or you could be potentially working off a lower resolution clip with a look baked in. But now we have our original NROC clip, so I can hit option A to get that adjustment clip layer, throw on that custom LUT, and there we go. And now we can color grade, have all that full control that we want. At the same time, we still have access to all the raw metadata here. So I can adjust EV compensation, change that color temperature for one a little bit warmer, a little bit colder, and adjust that ISO. And again, the purpose was to cover just the raw formats. Obviously, there's still ProRes HQ and H.265, H.264, but those aren't raw. So you should just be able to import and those should work just fine. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And if there's any other videos that you wanna see on the Nikon ZR specifically, definitely let me know whether it's filming with the camera or more of the post workflow with it after the fact. Let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I'll catch y'all later.